What is up guys, TEJ here, and in today's video, we are gonna be reviewing the brand new Wilson DynaPower Carbon Driver. So, let's get right into it. All right guys, so the brand new Wilson DynaPower Carbon Driver. This is gonna be one of two new models from Wilson in 2023. You're gonna have the Wilson DynaPower Titanium, which is gonna be your higher launching, higher spinning, a little bit more draw bias driver. Then you're gonna have the DynaPower Carbon, which is gonna be your lower launching and spinning, more fade bias style driver. Now in terms of design with the DynaPower Carbon, it's really all in the name. There's a lot more carbon fiber in this head in comparison to the Titanium model, which allows them to redistribute weight in ways that make this a little bit lower launching and spinning. Also, it's going to offer a little bit of a difference in terms of sound and feel because of the fact that they've implemented carbon fiber. Now, again, from a launch and spin perspective, this DynaPower Carbon is going to feature a 12 gram rear weight in the back of the head, as opposed to the Titanium model, which features a 16 gram rear weight in the back of the head. So really think of this as more of the player's model, maybe TSR3 competitor, Stealth 2 Plus competitor, uh, Aerojet LS, Paradigm Triple Diamond, really aimed at better players, a little bit lower launching, a little bit lower spinning. Now in these Wilson DynaPower drivers, they are both gonna have a new PKR2 face from Wilson, which stands for Peak Kinetic Response, and it is an AI design face from Wilson that has different variable thicknesses throughout the entirety of the face. Really the goal here is to create a driver that has more consistent launch angles and better ball speed across the face. And if you're wondering why an AI design face sounds familiar is because that is exactly what Callaway has also been doing in their metal wizard drivers over the past few years. Both of the Wilson DynaPower drivers are gonna feature a six way adjustable adapter, meaning you're gonna be able to go down one degree in half degree increments and then up two degrees in half degree increments. In terms of pricing, you're going to be looking at $430 US for the Wilson DynaPower Titanium, and it's going to come stock with a Project X hazardous RDX red shaft. And in terms of pricing for the Wilson DynaPower Carbon, you're going to be looking at $500 US and it comes stock with a Fujikira Ventus blue shaft. Both drivers come stock with a Lampkin Crossline 360 grip in a gray colorway. Now in terms of lofts, the Wilson DynaPower Carbon is going to be offered in an 8 degree, 9 degree, 10.5 degree, and 12 degree. The DynaPower Titanium on the other hand is only going to be offered in a 9, 10.5, and 13 degree. It's really interesting that they're offering the carbon in an 8 degree head. We haven't really seen that from smaller manufacturers over recent years. Usually you're only seeing it from big OEMs and you're only really seeing it over the last few driver releases. So I think it's really cool that Wilson implemented an 8 degree head in their stock offerings. It means that they're aiming to get this in the bags of higher speed players who require a little bit less loft, which I do really love to see. Now, aside from all that, though, the real question here is, can Wilson make a driver that holds up to some of the top players in the metal woods industry? And that's what we're going to find out. I've been able to do some pretty extensive testing with the DynaPower over the last few weeks. So let's go ahead and dive into my opinions on the driver. From a looks perspective, I think Wilson has done a really good job with the DynaPower carbon driver. It's sort of understated in its looks, but at the same time has a little bit of flashiness, especially with that matte carbon fiber in the crown and the sole. And speaking of the matte carbon fiber, I like what they've done. I don't really like gloss carbon fiber. I like that they implemented matte carbon fiber. If there's a couple things I wish they would have done differently, there's a little logo or sort of icon on the front portion of the crown that maybe I don't love that much. And I also don't love the fact that there's a little red DynaPower logo on sort of the heel area of the crown. I think that they sort of embrace the underdog mentality in the looks of the Wilson DynaPower. And those couple of things just make the driver look a little bit busy in my opinion. But as a whole, I think that Wilson did a really good job with the look of the DynaPower Carbon. I know that they've struggled with looks at least in the eyes of consumers over the last five or 10 years. I think this one looks really, really cool. I absolutely love this sort of matte carbon fiber toe area with the Wilson logo. It looks so sick. And it's one of those things where if it was Titleist or TaylorMade that came out with it, people will be going nuts. But since it's Wilson, I think people aren't really saying much. And in my opinion, they should be. I do really like the look of the DynaPower Carbon. Now, from a feel perspective, I think Wilson, again, did a really nice job with the DynaPower. It definitely does not feel as fast as some of the top players 
in the industry, but at the same time, it's a very nice, solid thud feel out of the center of the face. In terms of sound, I've been able to hit this a lot. I've done a lot of on-course testing, and I actually really like the sound of the Wilson DynaPower driver. It's not too loud, it's not too muted, it's sort of somewhere in the middle. In my opinion, it is one of the better sounding drivers on the market currently. From a workability perspective, I think the DynaPower does okay. I wouldn't say it's the most workable driver I've ever hit. It's a little bit higher launching. I don't think the center of gravity is far enough up to make it super workable, but certainly if you want to hit fades or you want to hit big draws, it can be done. In my opinion though, it's a little bit harder to make those super small adjustments, maybe hit tighter draws or tighter fades. I think you have to kind of swing way out one way or the other to get the golf ball to move, which maybe I don't love, but in terms of workability, it is there. It's going to be there for better players who have better control over their golf swing. But if you're somebody who can't make big adjustments, maybe not the most workable driver that I have tested. Now, having said that, that sort of leads me into my next point, and that is that the Wilson DynaPower is actually a pretty forgiving driver. I feel like with that CG, maybe just a touch further back, the MOI is probably a little bit higher than some of the other player style models on the market. And so it actually is pretty decently forgiving. Out of that high toe spot, out of that low heel spot, I felt like it was performing very very nicely. I did not miss tons of fairways one way or the other, and I actually really feel like it is a pretty forgiving driver. All right, guys, so we've talked about my opinions on this driver. Let's go ahead and get into the raw data, the numbers where there are no opinions. It is just pure TrackMan numbers. We'll go ahead and start with the Wilson DynaPower, and we'll just put these on the screen. Ball speed 170.9, launch angle 13.2 degrees, spin 2472 RPMs, smash 1.48, and carry 295.3 yards. Moving on to my Titleist TSR3, we've got ball speed at 172.4, launch 11.4, spin at 2265, smash 1.5, and carry 296.6 yards. It's important to note that both of these drivers were set up at 8 degrees of loft and with very similar shafts in terms of profile and the exact same length. So what do these numbers go to show? Well, pretty much confirms exactly what I was feeling throughout the entirety of the video. I did not feel like the DynaPower was super hot out of the center, a little bit lower in terms of ball speed, so that makes sense. In terms of launch and spin, a little bit higher launching, a little bit higher spinning, definitely more forgiving, but at the same time, not quite as hot, not quite as long. Smash Factor 1.48, which I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit disappointed by. You heard me talk about it earlier, I just said it. It did not feel super hot out of the center, but I feel like with where we're at with drivers and design, that should have been at least at about 1.49 in terms of smash. My title is TSR, 1.5 out of the center is just absurd. It is super fast. In terms of carry though, Wilson actually held up very, very well against my titles. It was only a yard short. At the same time, I feel like in terms of launch and spin, the Wilson was maybe just a little bit more optimized in how it was hitting it, how it was launching and spinning. My TSR launched a little bit lower and spun a little bit less, which in terms of carry numbers, if I had that completely optimized, I probably could have gotten another five to seven yards out of it. So overall, in terms of numbers, I think the Wilson did very, very well. I think it held up really nicely against a top driver on the market. I think a lot of people are going to sleep on this Wilson DynaPower Carbon Driver, but they shouldn't. It is a really, really solid driver, and it is one that is worth testing. Looks, sound, feel, forgiveness, all of that stuff is really, really nice. And overall, Wilson has come a very long way in the driver department over the last few years. I'm very impressed with what I've seen with the DynaPower Carbon. In terms of a rating, I'm going to give this an 8.7 out of 10. I think there's a couple things that hold this driver back from being in the nines. It's that ball speed and smash factor that is just a little bit low in comparison to some of the top players on the driver market. And at the same time, I think the retail price is just a touch too high at $500. If this was in that 399 maybe 350 range, which I know sounds pretty low, I think that these would be flying off the shelves because the numbers are there. It is a contender, but I think within $100 or $50 of some of the top guys, it's going to be hard to sway people toward a Wilson DynaPower Carbon. Guys, that's a review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, comment if you have any questions at all. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and make sure you click that notification bell. Also, make sure you are following us on our other socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.